Today I'm going to talk to you about digital electronics and this is very different from what we've covered so far. In fact, it's quite a mathematical topic and if you enjoy maths and solving puzzles and algebra, you'll really enjoy this. And if you're interested in computer sciences and programming, this topic is also very relevant. Um, in digital electronics, information is represented using just two discrete values and we usually call those a zero and a one or an on or an off or high and low, or true and false, so two distinct values. Ideally, uh, no voltage or ground, so zero volts, would represent zero, and the full source voltage would represent a one. So in the case where you're using an Arduino, for instance, then one would be represented by five volts. But realistically, yeah, we kind of mean a low voltage, so something less than one volt would give us a reading of zero, and a high voltage, so something in this case with uh, maybe above four volts would represent a one, so on or off states. Uh, usually you can use uh, well, switches in order to represent these values or achieve these values, so a switch is on or a switch is off, and we tend to use transistors for switching processes, and we already talked about transistors uh, in, in the previous lectures. Analog systems process time-varying signals that can take any value over a continuous range of voltages. So analog electronics deals with non-discrete values and they're all the things that we've covered before. Um, in digital systems, you can only process time-varying signals that have these discrete voltages. So it's not that all of the signals are just zero or one, but you can do maths and add them up. It just means that you, you're talking about discrete levels, discrete values only. And because we're talking about discrete discrete or exact values, it means that digital signals aren't affected by noise in the same way that analog signals are. So this makes them very easily reproducible and that digital systems tend to be very easy to design and programmable and then therefore faster. So they have numerous advantages over analog systems. In order to describe how digital electronics work, I first need to introduce some new concepts. And the first of those is the binary numeral system or the base two system. And you need to understand this because this is how computers operate. Um, in order to understand it, we need to sort of take a quick look at how we usually count, how we usually use numbers in our base 10 or decimal system. And I know to us this seems really simple because we use it all of the time and we don't even really have to think about how we understand numbers. But it's worth explaining it from scratch anyway so that we can make the analogy with base 2 when we move on. Now, in our decimal system, we, uh, we require 10 different numerals, 0 through to 9, as you know, and you can see here. But, of course, you know it's possible to count higher than 9, and to do so, we have to use what we call a, a positional notation. So this means that if I start counting upwards from 0, once I get to 9, if I want to count higher, I have to reset my 1s, to a zero and I move off to another column where I denote a one. So now here my zero is representing that I have nothing in the ones column and I have one in my tens column. And that's how we're used to counting anyway. Okay, I'm just gonna pick another number so that we can get our head around the positioning system. So of course I know that you know how to count in decimal. So this seems very obvious, but if I write this number down, hopefully you know this is 4,761. But what, what does the positioning of these numbers actually mean? Well, we know here we have a 1, here we have 60, so it's 6 times 10. This is 7 times 100, and this is 4 times 1,000. But So here we have a 1's column, 10's column, 100's column, and 1,000's column. And where this comes from is our base 10 system. So actually this column here represents 10 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So this is our 1's column. This represents 10 to the power of 1, which is 10. So this is our 10's column. This represents 10 to the power of 2. So that's our 100's column. And this represents 10 to the power of 3 
which gives me my thousands column. And you can keep going in that direction, or you can drop a decimal point here, and you can go into negative powers if you wanted to count uh, decimal fractions, uh, for, for instance. But so when we're counting in our usual base 10 decimal system, what we're actually doing is we're going, okay, four times a thousand in that column, add seven times 100 in that column, add six times 10 in that column, add one times one there, gives me 400, uh, 4,761. And we do that without thinking about it. But it's worth going through because now I wanna talk about how do we count in base two. So base two, base two in our binary system, we only have two different digits. So in our decimal system, we had 10 different symbols that we could use for counting, and then to count higher, we would have to change the positioning into another column. Now, in order to, uh, in order to count in binary, you need two different digits. We have a zero and a one, so we have two different digits, and that's all we have. So in order to count higher than zero and one, we need to start using the same sort of positioning system. So I'll just give you another example. Here, if I have this number, one, zero, zero, one, what does this represent in binary? Well, we use the same positioning system we used here, but now our base is two. So what that means is this column represents two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, two to the power of two, and two to the power of three. So that's what these columns represent in the same way that in our decimal system, they represented these 10 to the powers. So we know anything to the power of zero is, uh, is one. So this is our ones column. This is our twos column. This is our fours column. And this is our eights column. And you can continue going up higher and higher. So what this means is that this represents, let's start this side, this column has a one in it, so one times one is equal to one. Zero times two is equal to zero. Zero times four is equal to zero. And one times eight is equal to eight. So if I wanted to convert one zero zero one in binary into decimal, that's going to be equal to nine in our usual counting system. So that's how you can convert between the two. In binary, maths is also done in the same way as, um, as in decimal. So I'll just show you a very quick example. If you were to add two binary numbers together, you do exactly the same. So you add these two columns together. So a zero out of one is just a one. However, when you've got a one add a one, well, one is the highest you can count to in this column. So you have to go a one add a one goes back to a zero and you carry the one over. And then the one here, you add to this one and a zero here. So this will also go to a zero. And then you have a one to carry over that you bring down here. So these two things added together is equal to this. And you can check this by check it, changing all of these numbers into decimal. So you know that this is the ones column. This is the twos column. So here you're going to have this is equal to two. This is equal to one plus two plus four, so this is seven. And then we know from the previous example, this is equal to nine, so you can check that that's okay. So computers operate in base two or binary, and then information is then processed in just two different ways. It's either in a zero or in the form of a one. And these digits, zero or one, are known as binary digits or bits, okay? So a collection of eight bits in total gives you one byte of information. And of course, hopefully you're already familiar with the prefixes. So a megabyte would be 10 to the six bytes. A gigabyte would be 10 to the nine bytes, for instance. So with eight bytes in one bit, uh, you can represent 256 values or, or states. So let's look at this. So here you've got eight bits of information. If they were all zero, then you have a value of zero. And if they were all one, you have a value of 255. So it's possible to count between zero and 255. So we get a, a total of 256 different states. So you can calculate that by doing two to the power of n, where n is the number of bits. And uh, that's also known as its resolution. 
So in the case that you see below, um, originally it was possible to represent our zeros and ones as switches, switches being on or off. So that would give us your, your on and off states. And then, you know, th these were replaced with um, valves. And we talked about valves last week and they would represent state. They basically are switches. So this, uh, the switches would also be on or off. And of course, these things are huge. Right. And eventually they were replaced with transistors, which are much, much smaller. And now we have over seven billion transistors on one chip. So you can see that the technology is getting smaller and smaller, allowing us to have far more processing power uh, within smaller and smaller devices. In fact, we can get the equivalent of 500 transistors on the surface of one red blood cell inside our chip. So they're the kind of scales that we're now talking about. So if we look at an Arduino, for instance, we have a 10-bit uh, analog to digital converter. So 10 bits, so n is equal to 10. Uh, so we know that we can distinguish there were 1,024 states between 0 and 1,023. So if you want, you can calculate, okay, the Arduino we tend to use between 0 and 5 volts. So what is the voltage resolution? Well, we can calculate that by doing 5 divided by 1023, which gives us 4.9 millivolts. Uh, so that's the, the value that it can, uh, can distinguish between.